Hello and welcome to Dynamic Months. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, we're gonna look at several functions that we can use in our formulas to create a dynamic list of months. We can then use that list of months for reporting or to pull KPIs. Exercise one. In this first exercise, we'll just get the values from the last several rows. So assuming we store or calculate the underlying data, we'd like a formula that always pulls the final three, six, two, or the final month. For this, we're gonna use the take function. The first argument is array. That's just the range that has the values we want returned. In this case, it's gonna be table one. The second argument is the number of rows we want. So do we wanna take the first three rows? We could use the number three. If we wanna take the last three rows, we could use a negative three. And what's nice about this is it's relatively simple and it's always gonna pull the final three rows. So when we get to December and we have a KPI of 50, we can see that our report automatically updates. The problem with this approach is it doesn't account for sort order. So if someone were to come in and change our sort order, now everything is broken. Plus it doesn't let us specify exactly which months we want. So for that, let's head to the next exercise, exercise two. In this exercise, we're gonna write our formula that returns the specified number of periods, starting with whatever value the user enters. So for this, we're gonna go with the EO month function. That stands for end of month, and it's always gonna return the last day of the month. The start date is whatever the user types in here. And for the number of months argument, we're gonna use the sequence function. We're gonna tell the sequence function to return this many values, and we want it to start at zero. Close the sequence function, close the EO month function, and enter. And now we see this formula returns three results. But maybe we want our report to return six months, or two, or four. You get the idea. So this formula dynamically returns the number of periods requested. And with that working, let's head to the next exercise. Exercise three. In this example, we want the user to be able to enter the desired number of periods, the begin date, and we want our formula to return that many periods and look up the corresponding KPI values. Again, we'll use the EO month function. We'll use this as the start date. And for the number of months, we're gonna use the sequence function to return this many rows, and we're gonna start at zero. Close the sequence function, close the EO month function, and enter. Now this is returning the date serial. That's no problem. We can simply select these values and apply whatever kind of date formatting we prefer. To return the KPI, we're gonna use the XLOOKUP function. We're gonna go find this, but we actually want it to work for the entire range. So we're gonna add the spill operator, comma, we want to look for it in here, comma, and we want to return the KPI value. Close function and enter. And now this is fully dynamic. So if we want to return four periods, we can do that. If we want it to start at 2, 28, 20, 30, we can do that. If we want it to start at 4, 30, 20, 30, we can do that and maybe we only want three. And this setup is a lot more reliable. For example, it's not gonna break when someone changes the sort order. Hey, hopefully this helps. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my Pivot Table for Beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a Pivot Table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of Pivot Tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 